Uh, hi everyone. In this video, we are going to take a look onto this example and we'll see how we can improve it. I mean, by design, this looks fine. We have a class, we have a method, and based on type, we are actually doing something, right? And uh, the, our objective is okay. Let's get uh, the 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 max altitude which we can achieve, right? So even if like uh, tomorrow if there is a new uh, uh, aircraft come, like Air Force One seven 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 or some another type of Boeing then we have to write this method and maybe it can have some other methods which we need to which we need to call right so is this this is not a good design i mean we are not doing some generic thing here the getting the altitude for each and every aircraft is different right so it's like totally we are actually trying to mix them up where the the getting the the altitude is different everybody is using uh, different methods for it so in, instead of doing this why can't we have a separate class for each and every Boeing type, aircraft type? So we can just have a class airplane and then other class we can just create by extending it. So we can actually create Boeing 777, which is extending. Okay, and here we can actually have this method. And this method is actually common i mean we can actually define this method here and all the child classes can extend it now the, the boeing 77 may have a different processor like something we can actually call this method and get it so here we will just get return of this similarly we can have another class for aircraft one so air force one or air india or anything extend airplane and uh, maximum altitude is coming from this method right it's like totally clean and totally isolated now all the common methods you can actually put it here so inheritance always solve these kind of problems when it comes to segregating the code okay now i mean few small small things whenever we write a for loop we actually optimize the code something like uh, I mean, I also under the impression that this was a good way of writing where you are actually writing the length, getting the length for every iteration and keeping this constant so that every iteration can use this. But it's not going to improve a lot. I mean, the modern browsers are optimized enough. This is currently in the current world. This is our optimization from the documentation which I read. So you can avoid this. I mean, if you just do it, this should be fine i is less than list dot length browsers are now optimized enough to deal with this kind of thing okay now coming to objects and classes because those are always the focus area when we create when we write getters and setters for a class or for an object how to create a private variable how to reveal the how to write a module pattern using classes or using objects okay so simple example we'll, we'll start with is uh, there is just a simple function okay in that function so i want to do I, i'm currently i'm doing something like this and we'll just try to optimize this design how we can make this better okay bank account and it is returning this balance zero we can actually call this and just set the balance because this is representing here it can have other methods also so you can say that this balance is something which is private to this functions which is not exposed directly so how we can how we can actually capture the private properties inside a function right when you want to do more beyond getting the object property you don't have to look for the change every ancestor in the code base So in this example, we will talk about how we can encapsulate these internal properties, right? Uh, so first of all, how to add a private properties and then we will write a getters and setters to make this fix this problem, right? So function this and here we are actually, this is let balance. Currently, this is a private property. You can't access it by creating the object. So you should, you will be writing a function function get balance and what it will do is it will return your balance 
and this property is not uh, attached to this object so this is how you have to do it there will be another method which is a set balance and here you will be just uh, setting the balance equal to amount which you are passing okay and on top of this you are actually revealing it in different fashion so okay you can just map it to the get to get balance and set to set balance okay now once you actually access the object like I will just do the same thing again here I got the account I can just call these set methods or get methods because what this is returning this is returning these methods set balance so here you are not revealing what you are setting I mean for the readability perspective you can just set uh, you can just do get balance or set balance but this is how you can actually access the the private property by just writing these methods or revealing these methods set balance hundred right this is just a this is also known as a module pattern in javascript that you actually write your code and then reveal whatever you wanted to reveal this may have a private functions or a private variables like this so those are not exposed directly out to the outside okay so in the next video we'll take a look more about the inheritance and compositions and in the future videos we'll also talk about the solid principles different module patterns the way to write the javascript code like esx module pattern common js amd umd will not go into that deep but you should have understanding how to write them optimally i mean you should import only whatever is needed from that file if you are writing a common js modules or esx modules okay that's it thanks everyone